So we edit the comments for our YouTube videos, right? For this series. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah we do. Uh, I think I should have said moderate, shouldn't I? Yeah, so so we, we don't that. edit them. We don't go in and like, make you say something different. So I'll I mean, try that again. Oh, well, we can, if we can oh. go with, like, this is the greatest show I have ever seen. These people should get a raise. <laughs> it's messing it up straight away. We are building the Chrome Dev Summit website. Yes, we are. And we are looking into using uh, Push notifications. Because we're trying not to be annoying about them. Yeah, this is one thing that everyone loves on the web. It's push notifications. Everyone Every site loves it. Yeah. No, can't, I think can't it... stop myself from hitting allow. I'm like, oh, I'm just. It's so Curiosity good. has got the best of me. I like I... my lock screen is full of notifications. I don't know what your website's about, but you have asked me if I want notifications. I I, and my it. answer is always yes. I hate of it. Course when you go it to a website for the first thing, like, hey, would you like? I don't even know what for. Like, yeah. what are you doing? Who approved this? Yeah. Either way. We actually think we have a legit use case, namely <laughs> yes, that. That's what everyone says, but, <laughs> but OK, yes, we think we do. Because we, this conference is something that you can not only attend in person, but obviously also watch with live stream from home, yep. which might mean that you're in a different time zone. Yes. So what we want to do is that you can say, this session is interesting to me. Let me know. 10 minutes ahead of time before it's about to start. We'll be asking for permission at a good time. Like, yeah, once they click like, like notify me, we will say, well, then we would need your permission to notify you. And that seems like a, a reasonable time to ask. Yes. Right. OK, yes. yes. So I agree. Just to, as a context, why did I look into web push? And I did. And I was actually kind of scared because I, I, I'd never done it. I've never used web push. Mm. And I know that back in the day, Google Cloud Messaging had like their own proprietary API. And that was like yes. a competitor. And it was incompatible with anything else. And I was like, I don't want to do this. And I looked into it. And it's so much better. It's actually, I would say it's enjoyable now. So is that our, our documentation for this still written by Monty Gaunty? Uh, is that the out of date documentation is written by Monty Gaunty. Yes, yeah, so you should say this is someone who was on the team like a few years ago. And then he um, bailed on us. And he bailed on us. But we call him Monty Gaunty because uh, Well I saw Mont Gaunt. Mont Gaunt. If we can we hopefully we can get like this footage like to it, display it now. It's from the, the PWA summit in Amsterdam twenty sixteen, I, I want to say. Or something like that. And it was so his his name, Matt Gaunt. Uh, but while he was talking to camera, little like the young, editor is just called him Mont Gaunt. Gaunt. <laughs> it was like I like his surname so much. We'll put it twice. So that that was it. That was that was and his. That's his name gone. I think that's why I had to leave the team because it was just like all right, Monty, how's it going? Yes. Right. So he was our push person, push and person. he left, and um, Monty push things boy. changed, and we had nobody update the documentation. Good, just, excellent. This is how we work. Either way, moving on. All right. Uh, web push. Good. Let's let's talk about this. So it is now an open protocol standardized by the IETF. All the browsers that do implement it implement that specific protocol. And that is pretty much every browser apart from Safari. Yes, yes. Safari doesn't have support for web push. All right, let's take a look at this. So the first thing that you need for push notifications is to have a push handler in your service worker. And this right. could just be to show a notification ir irrespective of push. But you know you need to show notifications. So what you do is you just add an event listener for push. Excellent. And then you know it's usually a good idea to check if you actually ever got permission from the user, because otherwise uh, the notification call will throw. So, so it, it's interesting that actually, um, I, as far as I'm aware, every browser will bundle the push the push notification permission and the notification permission. Like push permission and notification permission become yes, the same thing. Yes, if I asked for yeah. for a subscribe later on, I will get the user will get asked for permission. But it doesn't mean that you couldn't get a push event without the user ever having consented to notifications. Not in Chrome. Really? Yeah, yeah. When you subscribe for push, um, the, the permission you get there that says, do you want push or not, if you say allow, it will give you notification permission as well. Exactly. No, so you can still get a push event without the user ever having been asked for permission, I think. At least if you're triggered by a DevTools. For example. Oh, where you, maybe, but I would say <laughs> I would say otherwise. I'm pretty sure not. It's definitely not. It's definitely not in Chrome. Definitely, definitely not a bad thing to check before, okay. and so you, yes. the code doesn't throw because throwing is usually. It's definitely possible that other browsers may like diverge or two things. You can still get a push event, but the user has since then rejected your or has has oh. removed your permission to show notifications. Also, I think a thing that could be happening. I'm not too sure about that. Either way, I'm just trying to justify. Just do a check. All right. 
That's all I'm saying. No, it's right? good. So what happens in a push event? You get an event, and then the event has a dot data attribute. It works very similar to a fetch response in that you can do unmarshal this text, JSON, array buffer, um, and that's what you get. And then you can use the show notification API to actually show a notification on the system. On Android, it will yes. be a notification notification bar. On Mac OS, Windows, Linux, it will be like one of these on-screen display notifications that are there for a couple of seconds. There you go. This is pretty much the notification part, notification part of Web Push. Yep. So yep. that's done. But let's talk about the interesting thing. And oh. in this part, we're going to talk about cryptography. Cryptography. Well, actually, we're not going to talk about it. Because one of the golden rules, I think, and everybody knows is don't roll your own crypto. No. It's all like the spec is out there, and it's actually very readable. What, how do you need to encrypt what, which data to actually be compatible to the protocol? But pretty much every language has a web push library that encapsulates all of that logic. So I would recommend not doing it yourself. Use the libraries, and you will actually have a very pleasant experience of just yeah. making it work. I remember the days when this was specced, and there was a lot of like. So the reason that we use crypto here is it's for the body of the push message. Yeah. Right. Well, not only that, but also just for being allowed to push in the first place. That that you can actually prove the user has granted you permission. But um, right. Um, Interesting. Because Th there's multiple levels here. But part of the reason uh, that it came about was like the the servers that are delivering the push messages, be it like uh, you know Chrome, uh, maybe eventually Apple one day, or like Telefonica, who I think uh, or certainly used to do the stuff for uh, Firefox. They don't want to see your messages. We don't want them to see our messages, right? Yeah, yes, we we don't, and they didn't either. It was yeah. like let's let's reach this mutual understanding that as we are just delivering these messages, we don't want the For ability them, it's to just you know, binary blobs, and it should stay that way. Yes, yes, we don't want like Michael to know, like we don't want to know that Michael has a, a new baby boy or something like that. <laughs> it's just like, not not interested. Yeah, just we just want to marshal that data around. Um, but yes, we knew it was going to be uh, slightly more effort for right. developers. But to be fair, the libraries that came out of it, at least, so I've been, I've been looking at um, the Web Push NPM package, which is written by oh. one of the engineers from Mozilla. And it's not only very well written, as in you can actually go in, read the code, and understand what's going on, mm. but the API is super simple. So you can actually get started quite quickly. So this, this is on the, oh yes, this, this is, is in actually, notes. This, this is on the server side. It might be server, it could actually be locally doing development. You just generate, a pri you need a private key and a public key. Right. And so there is a function called, this whole process is called VAPIT. That's the, the name for the algorithm, I guess. It's voluntary something, something, something. I don't remember. <laughs> it doesn't even matter that much. Cool. But basically, you need this private key and the public key. The private key is obviously private, so keep it safe. The public key, you can publicize, put it in your front end anywhere. Um, but you will need the private key on your server site later, so make sure you get it there, because that's what you need to sign with to actually be able to push the message to the right. provider. But the public key will go to the, uh, the to client to do to the, the decoding. Side. Yes. Right, I see, I see. Um, so yeah, this is basically the first call. You just import the web push library mm -hmm. and you generate your keyboard. And that's the first step done. So that once you have those in place, we are now on the client side. So in there, right. I need to get somehow get my public key. So you could bundle it with your web app via you know, Webpack or Rollup. You could fetch it from your server as a resource. Doesn't really matter. You just need to get it. And it's public, so you can just put it on the internet. Nobody cares. The public key is, is unique to your site, not per user. No, that, it's, it's unique correct? to site. Yeah. Right, I see, I see. And I mean, technically, you can even have multiple, but it doesn't quite make sense. But it's up to you. You can generate those. It's free. OK. Um, so yeah, once I have the public key, I will then wait for my service worker to be ready, available, and running, because that is the one that takes care of anything that has to do with Web Push. Yep. And then I can use the push manager property on the service worker to ask for a subscription. And yes. as you said, asking the user to, to subscribe basically implies the permission for notification. So this will pop up the permission dialog and wait for the user to respond. Um, and actually, user visible only has to be true. Currently yes. on the web, we don't allow push notifications that don't trigger a visual notifications. Yes. Notification. So maybe at some point in the future, that would be possible to do like a background sync kind of thing. Don't know yet for now, only with a permission. Yeah, one of the, uh, well, one of the things that we would like to do um, with like user visible kinda, <laughs> which, <laughs> well, so, so here's a situation. Say I deliver a push message to your phone to say you know, there's a new chat message. Yeah. But I know that you, by your user ID, have just checked that message on your desktop machine. Right. The ideal thing would be then to hide the push message really on your case, mobile. Yeah. Uh, but then that is no longer a user visible thing because I, you know, 
if you granted the ability to do that, then you've granted the ability to do invisible push yeah. work because you were just show notification, hide notification, job done, who cares? Yeah. So yeah, that's one of the things where there's a really good use case and there the reason for it. We don't just want to allow notifications without any visual effect is what? Um, well, it would give you the ability to just send a push message every Keep 10 seconds, uh, track with the user through the different you know, IP. You're, right. you're running service work in the background. It's Why not do some Bitcoin nightmare, mining? Basically. Privacy, uh, battery, exploitation, um, all kinds of things. All of the bad, all of the bad things. Yeah. As yeah. always, we're past to think about these things. Yes. Um, so yeah, basically, the pattern is like, OK, I'm going to promise I'm always going to show a notification. And if you don't, Chrome will show one for you. So it's not like you can get around it. Um, and we provide our public key. So that way, we can use a private key to sign things, and the clients that can check it actually came from us. And this is how it's also going to decode the body. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Gotcha. So and then what we get back, once the user actually presses allow, you mm -hmm. can show me notifications, or you can send me you know, push notifications, we will get a subscription. And I find this interesting because there's okay. actually very little data in there. There is the endpoint that the server side later on will use to send push notifications out. And so in Chrome, it will be. Firebase Cloud Messaging .google -apis .com. In mm -hmm. Mozilla, it will be on Mozilla server. Uh, I'm pretty sure Adgium is going to use a Microsoft server. I'm not sure about yeah. that. Um, Safari, as you said, doesn't have it yet. There's an expiration time, and there's the keys, which are for the Diffie Hellman handshake, but that doesn't really matter right now. But basically, there is no other personal data in here. Like it's not like there's a lot of leakage happening about what the user is doing or what they're subscribing to. It's literally just the cryptographic keys that are needed to make this whole thing happen securely. As on like a zero knowledge kind of approach. OK. So we get this back. And then what we do, as I said, we need to send this to our server side. So one way to do this would be a fetch where we just post it to my serverless function, your whatever, wherever you're running. You need to store that this subscription thing as a stringified JSON blob on the server side because you need gotcha. it to actually send the notification later on. And this and this is going to be unique to that user. So this and is this something is very that unique to that user. Right. For every user will get a different kind of subscription blob that you need. Right. So now on the server side, we are now at the point where maybe at some point in the future we want to send a push notification. Right. So we have we know we have our keys on the server side. We know we have the subscriptions for a user on the server side. So we basically need to find all the users that we want to send something to, loop over them, and now do something. And again, uh, web push, the library makes it quite easy because you know we get our keys, we get our subscription for that particular user. Yep. We you set our vapid details, which is the public and the private key. They also demand a contact email or multiple contact emails in case something goes wrong. You just want to have a point of contact oh, okay. to, yeah. to send Makes emails sense. to. And then you just send a notification. So basically, we turn the push, push subscription back into a JSON blob, put our body in there. It can be a string. It can be another stringified JSON object. Whatever that will take care of the inscription and hit that endpoint from the subscription and send it to the user. And that's it. And that's it. That's all. That's how you do push notifications. I was quite amazed because I literally huh. just ran through this library, wrote it up, and it worked on the first try. And that never happens. So this is the thing, because I, I, <laughs> I know bits about the service worker side of push because yeah. we were doing like spec work around at the time. But I've never done the server side of it because it's like, oh, it involves keys. It's probably mm -hmm. going to be hard. And like, ah, I'm not going to touch that until I really need to. This is all right, pretty isn't approachable, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. We, we now have this on a branch. In our Chrome Desktop side, we still have some some you know tuning, some some edge cases and stuff to work out and yep. help allow people to unsubscribe if they don't want notifications anymore because they want to be nice about this. Yep. But other than that, we got it up and running. We look forward to spamming everyone with pointless stuff. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. We moderate the comments for our YouTube stuff. Yes. Right. We were told um, to. A couple of episodes ago, there was a guy uh, posted a comment and he was saying. Uh, I think you could have edited out the disgusting flatulence noise at <laughs> one. Do you see this comment go past? I did see the comment. Did you Did you go and listen to what the the, the actual timestamp it I was? Th I think it was me going. <gasps> well, I, well, I thought it was me, but it was one of us doing that. <laughs> no, it was just because I said, you know, have a look at that. And that guy posted fifteen comments. Really? It there was fifteen of just like variations on that theme. Like he was so angry about that. But that's. Is that what his flatulence sounds like? It, uh, yes. Because that's... You gasping. 